<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing? Somebody say yeah. yeah. Welcome to the Paul Santos Show. Give it up for the Paul Santos Band. Yes. We got a lot of a lot of phenomenal talent tonight. So put your hands together for my friend, your friend, everybody's friend, Mr. Paul. Here you go. place where we bring you not only the talented, not only the interesting, but the entertaining from our area. How about that introduction from my co-host right here? Give it up for my good friend, Mr. Chops Turner! Chubby! Yeah. And how about the king of the keys? Oh, he does it with such ease. He aims to please. Along with that great saxophone player, Artie DeMello, <laughs> here is Gary Langevin in the PSL band! <laughs> hey, there they go! <laughs> You guys are at it already. <laughs> well, as we said, the talented, interested, and entertaining live here. Starting with our first guest, who's going to be up in just a few minutes. You're going to love him. He performs here a lot at Mikey B's on Saturday nights. His name is Hunter Braley. He's here tonight. Hey, we have some classic music from some really, really talented singers. Also here tonight, the Villainaires. And we have a good friend, an all-around entertainer, a DJ. He told me to introduce him as the sexiest man alive. His name is Mike Bollea. Mike Bollea, do you remember? <laughs> all right, all right. By the way, if you're watching the show live tonight, online, the Paul Santos Live Facebook page or YouTube channel, please type something in, right? We say hello. Want to say hello to Gary? Say hello to Chops. Make sure we know you're out there. So uh, give us a little comment. They call that being interactive, Chops. Got to be interactive. So say hello and we'll talk right back to you. Okay. Time to get caught up in the news. Does that sound like a good idea, Chubbs? You sure? Hey, you know, uh, I heard this in the news. You know, an airline wants to test an adults-only section. Huh? What do you think about that? An adults-only section? Does that mean adult-only movies? Oh, let's hope. Never mind adult-only sections, right? How about adult-only flights? What about that? Does anybody like that idea? I love, love that idea. Yeah, yeah. Be kind of awkward at the airport, though. Sorry, lady, you can't bring the brat on as a carry-on. <laughs> but you can check him and pick him up when you get there. <laughs> Could always put him in a doggy crate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, all this talk about airlines, it, it, it kind of reminds me of something. It reminds me of one of Chops' exes. <laughs> Lucy Layover. <laughs> I'll tell you, the layovers were good, but she had too much baggage. Wow. I'll tell you. Hey, uh, do we have any Rolling Stones fans here tonight? Don't ever leave your pizza burning. Do you know that for the first time in 18 years, the Rolling Stones released a new album? Did you know that? You should see some of the songs they have on this album. For example, I Can't Get No. Pepto Bismol. Yeah. I can't get no milk of magnesia. Ow. I can't get no Metamucil. Ow. How about please don't leave your pizza burning? <laughs> now, now, <laughs> now, obviously, we're playing around with some of the titles. There are some of the titles that they're going to keep. You know that? Not change it at all. Like Ain't Too Proud to Beg. Going to keep that one. Yeah, I got to keep that one. That one. That one. Hey, Chops, you know Kanye West, right? You guys know Kanye West? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, Kanye West was in the news. Him and his girlfriend were banned by a Venice boat company because Kanye flashed his butt during the boat ride. Can you imagine that? Unbelievable, you know? Well, Kanye's dumb girlfriend asked, can I still ride the dinghy? <laughs> and Kanye said, with that fanny pack, absolutely. <laughs> Chops, what do you think about that one? That was all right. <laughs> Are the guests still here? Uh, 
Mike Belair wants me to bring out the garbage can. <laughs> I would get the dumpster outside, Bob, Mike. Mike. Says I need a bigger garbage can. I got a dumpster in the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Hey, you know, I got to tell you, Chops, my wife who's here tonight, can we hear it from my lovely wife, Ann Santa? Please Santa's? hear, yeah, I love her. Yes, I hear. You know, Chops, my wife was always saying that I don't listen to what she says. or anything. Does that happen to you, Chops? Yeah, you know, you're speaking, and for some reason they're speaking, and you care. My friend Johnny J is here tonight. I think the same thing happens to him sometimes. He's not quite listening. You know, I, I got to tell you, this actually happened the other day. My wife and I went out to a restaurant, and I thought I heard my wife say, hey, all right, that's great. Let's go to the ballet. I said, the ballet? I said, we're going to the ballet? She said, no, no. I said, get the car from the valet. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got, I'm going to retract that wow. I got to zoom Oh, oh, you're doing a reverse one. I got reverse. That wasn't really worth it. That, that wasn't a joke. That actually happened, you know? Oh, did it? And then my wife loves to go to the beach. So one day I said, hey, honey, sweetie pie. I said, are you going to the beach? She said, no, I might get attacked. I said, attacked? What, from sharks? You're going to get attacked? She said, no, it's going to be packed. a bigger trash can. Yeah. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> hey, can you see my wife's table from there? I can, yes. All right, all right. I'll, she's I'll, giving I'll... me the dirty look through my eyes, <laughs> but she's telling me to look at you. So through, I'm the conduit. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> hey, hey I, got, I, got, I got something right here. I, I'm not sure about this joke. I think I should have I I cut this one. No, then say it. Definitely say it. So Those say are the it? best ones, yeah. The ones that I think I'm going to cut are usually the yes, best ones? they're the best ones. Well... Chops, you know, a few weeks back, this is a day for everything, Chops, you know. Can you believe a few days back, they actually had National Hot Dog Day? Did you know that? Yeah. So I got up one morning, I thought to myself, ah, you know, National Hot Dog Day, I think I'm going to go out and get myself a foot long, you know. Yes. So I, I got up, I went down to the hot dog stand, and I said, hey, how you doing? Great to be here at the hot dog stand. I said, uh, hey, uh, uh, seeing as how that it's National Hot Dog Day, can I get a free Frank? The guy said, sure, Frank, come over here. No beef. Oh. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Yeah. All right, well, Chops, you know, we were just getting on a roll there, just on a roll, I, I, just hitting our stride. So I, I have to bring you some bad news. I'm very sorry to do this. I'm not going to bring you the final joke of the night. The final joke. Goodness, you don't have to get that excited about it, Chops. Yeah. They're actually holding back. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, that, that roar was deafening. Well, anyway, the mayor... <laughs> what are you saying back there? You, you know, like the teacher goes, let's all have a good laugh over here. Share it with the entire class. <laughs> all right, all right, moving right along. Uh, you know the mayor of Miami, Chops? The mayor of Miami was running for president decided to drop out of the 2024 race already. Imagine that. I mean, I thought a guy from Miami would be able to take the heat. I mean, his campaign went south, right to South Beach. For him, there was no Oval Office. It's back to the council chambers. He didn't even make the New Hampshire primary. In fact, he's already an Iowa caucus. For him, there's no West Wing. Looks like it's back to Miami holding his blame. The final joke. Yes, we have a great show tonight, Chops. We have a great show tonight. He's an award-winning documentary film producer. All right, did I say that right? And Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Kaju. Aaron the Baron Kaju. Went to the neurologist this morning for an increase in the frequency of my migraines. I asked him, is there anything I can do to stop these migraines? He said, stop working for Paul Santos. Yes, he did. Hey, who is this guy? Well, I didn't know he had a speaking well, role. You know, it's bad enough Chops and Gary, but, but now... And now the cameraman's turning against me. Come on, man. He started off as a producer, now he's just a cameraman. He's going to be doing his own show pretty soon. <laughs> All right, uh, time to move on to our next segment. We got a, a great singer coming up. Hunter Braley is on in just a moment. You're watching the Paul Santos Live Show. Thank you so much for looking in, and we'll be right back. Here's Gary Langevin and the PSL Band. <laughs> A 
special shout out to Mr. Don Willis. Don Willis is one of our favorites. We always call him the mayor of Round Hill. Watches every single week, and he just celebrated his 73rd birthday. So a special shout out to Don Willis. And ladies and gentlemen, would you put your hands together for Mr. Hunter Braley? How are we doing? Hey! So I figured I'd pick uh, one cover song and one original. So I'm gonna play the cover song now. And uh, if you know it, feel free to sing along. It makes it a lot better. Heading down south to the land of the pines I'm from my way into North Carolina Staring up the road and pray to God I see headlights I made it down the coast for 17 hours Picking me a bouquet of dogwood flowers And I'm hoping for all the I can see my baby tonight So rock me mama like a wagon wheel Rock me mama anyway Southbound train, hey, mama, rock me. Yes. Honey, from the cold up in New England, I was born to be a fiddler in old time string band. My baby plays a guitar, I pick a banjo now. You winners keep getting me down Lost my money playing poker So I had to leave town But I ain't even turning back To living that old life no more So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel Rock me, mama, any way you feel Hey, mama, rock me Yeah, rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain Rock me, mama, like a south Talking about Mikey Lee. Yeah. All right, let's hear it for Hunter Braley. Well, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, first of all, uh, getting involved in music and stuff like that. I mean, how did that happen for you? I I don't know. It was it was definitely a, a, a big change. I was not lined up to be a musician, but um, I went to school to be an accountant, and I had learned how to play the guitar late in high school. And um, for those of you that know accounting, it's not um, fun. So uh, yeah, something else was definitely definitely calling my name. So here I am. We're giving it a shot. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, it all, it all came together. <laughs> so how long have you been doing this now? Um, probably I've been playing for like five or six years, but I've been doing it full time for about two years now. Nice, nice. Well, you know, that name Braley, I don't know there's a lot of Braley's around our area. There's a lot more Santos's and Sousa's and stuff right. like that. Uh, but a lot of people are probably thinking, Braley, I wonder if that's anything to Pete Braley. Well, this is Pete Braley's son, and we're so glad to have Pete, the uh, terrific uh, radio announcer in the house tonight. That's Eric for Pete. He's also a, uh, an author of a book. And we worked together back in the day, played softball and everything else. So it's uh, great to have Pete here tonight. And Pete has been on the show as well. So I did want to ask you, um, you know, uh, as you were growing up and, you know, obviously having Pete as your uh, your dad and everything else and being on the radio, was that uh, did that provide anything different for you? Uh, I mean, I think he did a good job of, of not making it different. But I will say there was a lot of random people that would walk up and say facts about my life that they definitely shouldn't have known. Uh, <laughs> So that was concerning at times because I had no idea why they knew that. And then I realized that my dad was talking about me on the radio. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Well, and you guys started a podcast uh, a little while back. And I know that was, uh, you know, that was something that, uh, that went really well. And I know you enjoyed doing that, right? That was online every day and you guys would talk and laugh. And it was very, very good. How did that all come about? That was, uh, well, he was down in Virginia for uh, a little over a year, uh, be basically in day daycare for my nephew. And so I knew when he came back, he was going to need something to do. So I thought of the idea to, to put the show on for him. 
make it his old radio show, and we did. We did it for two years, and we developed quite the quite the fan base. Yeah, really, yeah, exactly. And it just wrapped up not that long ago, right? It did, yeah. Music was taking more of my time, and he's he's working more on writing and everything. So we took a step back. Who kn- it might come back at some point, but we'll see. You know how sometimes people knew stuff about you, and you didn't know that that was getting out there? Maybe we can leak out. Is he working on another book now? <laughs> he is, he is. Sorry about that. I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but he is. Oh, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> oops, oops. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, if you could write a book, the first book that he wrote was terrific. So uh, keep an eye uh, out on that. I know it's a lot of work to put a book together and stuff like that. Now, speaking of singing and performing, you also write. So tell me about that, because... It seems to me it's just got to be difficult for you to write your own stuff. That's where you kind of like separate the men from the boys, right? Right. It is, I mean, it is difficult. I've, I started writing songs like four or five years ago, and the songs I wrote in the beginning, no one's ever going to hear. Those are going to die with me because <laughs> they're, they're, they're not good at all. But then you, you keep practicing, they get a little bit, bit, bit better. And I still have a long way to go, but I like where we're at right now, yeah. So how do you come up with an idea to write a song? Uh, life, different ideas. I got a song about mental health. I got a song about uh, breakups, and you know that's the one I'll play tonight. Is about a breakup. No one's ever written a song about breakups, so I figured I'd, I'd try. Well, so obviously, you know, you, you must have reached back somewhere into your background to kind of uh, conjure up this situation, right? Yeah, right. You do that sometimes. You you have you take creative liberties. There's some details in songs that didn't happen to me, but a lot of the songs are they come from a true place. Yeah. Taylor Swift made a whole career out of this, you exactly, know. Exactly. So hopefully I can do the same. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, what is the name of the song that you wrote? This is going to be Slipping Out of My Mind. Slipping Out of My Mind. Have you ever been in that situation where you couldn't get somebody out of your mind? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not happening tonight, though, right? Uh, all, right all right. That's good. All right. No, oh, that's a great title. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Slipping Out of My Mind. Once again, here's Hunter Braley. Most nights I lie away with you on my mind But that hasn't happened much these days it Sounds like a good thing Like I'm moving on Or at least that's what I've heard people say I can't see your face when I'm dreaming Say breakups don't hurt forever, and it's true, but they say they get better with time. For the most part, they're right, but the one thing I find is the real pain you'll deal with inside is when they're slipping out of your mind. When they're slipping out. I'm driving home with you, singing through my mind. But now it's silent when the song gets to your mind. And it tears me to pieces that I had to scroll through pictures just so I remember the color of your eyes. They say breakups don't hurt forever. And it is true, but they say. Just 
That's a very nice song, Slipping Out of My Mind by Hunter Braley. Hey, that was a great song. How long did it take you to put that together? Uh, I wrote that one a, a year or two ago, and so that one, that one took, uh, I don't know, so they, they all vary. So I've written a song in 30 minutes, I've written a song in three months, three years, it takes a while, yeah. You really have to, uh, you're pulling the heartstrings on that one. That one, yeah, yeah. That song that I just played comes out uh, September 22nd, so depending on when you're watching it, maybe it's already out, but September 22nd, that song comes out. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us here on the Paul Santos Live Show. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. All right, let's hear it one more time. Hunter Braley, we'll be right back with more of the Paul Santos Live Show. Please stay with us. All of me, why not take all of me? Can't you see I'm no good without you? Take my lips. I want to lose. Take my arm, I'll never use them, yeah. I said your goodbye, left me with eyes that cry. Yo, could I go on down without you? You took the part that once was my heart, so why not take all of me. All right, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our director of comedy, Allison Dyan. Ali, Ali, oxen free. Why does uh, Gary always say Ali, Ali, oxen free? Because everybody, <laughs> everybody that's hiding right now, they need to come out from their hiding spot. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, well, it is Ali, I guess. Yeah. Does, does anybody ever call you Ali? Uh, my mom used to call me Allie, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Allison, we go by Allison, right? So, uh, th but now all the only entry, that's pretty good. Yeah, anyway. We all have a nickname, Paul. We all have a nickname. Yeah, yeah. Well. I don't say yours in public, <laughs> but... <laughs> all right, so what's going on with you? I, well, I'm short enough. I wasn't going to shorten my name. <laughs> but uh, no, last week I went on a job interview. Oh, really? Yeah, I got the job interview through a family member of mine. And when I got there, they told me I had to take a personality test. Oh. <laughs> and I do not believe in personality tests, okay? I think the science is nonsense. I don't think you can trust the results. I asked the interviewer why I had to take it. And she said, well, you know, they help us get to know the real you. What motivates you? How do you relate to the people around you? I mean, how else would we know those things? I said, well, you could just ask me. I am right here. <laughs> Some may say I'm the foremost authority on me. <laughs> Plus, you're my sister. <laughs> Good bet. Yes. So she made me take the personality test. And um, hand to God, this is true. Uh, when I asked for the results, I was told that due to privacy reasons, she does not get the full results. All she gets is an email. This is true with an emoji face that lets her know if you're hireable or not. So I said, okay, well, did I get a smiley face? She said, no. I said, well, did I get a frowny face? She said, no. I said, well, what face did I get? She said, this one. <laughs> Eggplant. Yeah. And you know what I have to say to that? The test nailed it. Yes, <laughs> I did not get the job, uh, not because of that, uh, but just because they felt that seven years of stand-up comedy is not an impressive resume for a paralegal. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you work for Paul's firm, not just. <laughs> well, actually, that could help you in my field. That's actually, uh, uh, being a being a comedian, you know, because you got to be a little bit of a look where I got you. I mean, yeah, yeah. see, I should should have interviewed with you. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, um, hey, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, it's always fun. She's the director of comedy. She's booking all of these comics. Uh, we don't have one tonight uh, except for myself and her. But other than that, uh, she books comics every week. We're really so happy to have her as our director of comedy. Allison Dye, ladies and gentlemen. All right, stand by. We got the Villainaires up next. <laughs> Thank you. 
Turner looking in tonight. We really appreciate that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, be prepared to be entertained. This trio, boy, they can really, really perform. Put your hands together for the Villainaires! Ladies and gentlemen, the Villainaires are just going to chat for a couple of moments. Uh, your name is Ed. Ed Lopes. Ed Lopes, right here, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, young lady is? Paula Frost. All right, and you are? Jim Beavis. All right, hey, thank you so much for coming down here tonight. Let me start with the uh, lovely lady right here, singing with the Villainaires. I mean, what has this been like? Uh, this is about my third show with them. I'm a newbie. Oh, it's <laughs> Well, you, you're fitting right in. What's it like joining these guys? Uh, they're a little bit to get used to, but they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, how did you guys, why don't you step in front of that light if you could. How, um, how did you guys meet? Um, I met Jim from singing with another group. Ah, okay. So then kind of word of mouth, we need a singer over there. They and had someone that was retiring, and Jim asked me if I wanted to join. And here you are. And here I am. Now, Ed, what about you? Your uh, singing career goes back to what? You started as a kid, right? Yeah, since I was a teenager. Teenager? Yeah, 
teenager. But I heard that you may have even started a little sooner than that. Yeah, I did. I did. We had a little group called the Pretenders way back then. I was like 13, 14 years old. No kidding. So you sing with like other classmates and stuff like that? Yeah. Well, I had a group, four pieces. Yeah. Four piece group. Nice. Well, we we uh, heard the platters. When we heard the platters, then we got the name Pretenders, and that's when we got the Pretenders and we started singing. So did you sing that song, The Great Pretender? Yeah, we did that. <laughs> we did. I figured that's, you know, you probably do it. So you've been doing this your entire life, huh? Yeah. So tell actually, me. Actually, in reality, I, um, I'm a bass player. Uh, I play bass. So you're a bass player by trade, and then you just decided. Did somebody ask you to sing when you are in a band? No, I, I um, started DJing and um, karaoke, and then I <laughs> met Jim. And Jim, he started singing. I said, well, i got to get a group together. I'm getting tired of it. Yeah. Doing the disco and stuff, and, you know, so I get a hold of him. So I know you're doing shows. Where do you play and how often? Uh, we did uh, a show yesterday. We did one Saturday, and we're going to be doing one next month with a uh, uh, Halloween dance and uh, dinner and dance. And that should be in time. That should be up to I can tell you love it. I mean, you just love it, right? The singing, it's, it's so fun. It's so therapeutic. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Keeps you, young. Keeps you young, that's for sure. <laughs> now, this gentleman over here... Um, how did you end up with the Villainaires and, you know, Ed and... Um, I went karaoke and and uh, <laughs> met him. And um, at first we uh, tried to start something with my brother and then that kind of fizzled out and um, we decided to do, to do a vocal thing. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah. Is there a certain kind of music that you folks like to do? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we try to mix it up a little. Yeah, nice. What kind of a kick do you get out of this? Um, I just love, love to sing. Always have. Yeah, nice, nice. yeah. Hey, Chops, did you hear that? Just you can start out one day, you're karaoke, and the next day it's like strangers in the night exchanging glances, <laughs> lovers at first sight. <laughs> what were the chances? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, it wasn't that bad, was it, Chops? I never mind. Can we get the garbage can for the singing? Yeah, anyway. All right, so you guys are going to do another song for us? All right, what song do you have lined up for us? Uh, Caramia. All right, this is going to be a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Villainaires! <laughs>
All right, let's hear it once again. The Villainaires, thank you so much for being part of our show tonight. We really appreciate it. Stand by. More to come on the Paul Santos Live Show. We'll be right back. time we're going to introduce to you a gentleman who has been working as a DJ and an entertainer for many many years we met way back in the days of radio in fact Pete Braley and myself and this gentleman were all part of the same radio station way back in the day would you please welcome the sexiest man alive <laughs> Mr. Mike Belair yeah. <laughs> I tell him, oh you kicked that thing you kicked the you clicked the thing all right thank you very much Mike Balea. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Welcome to the Paul Santos Live Show. So I understand you moved to Florida, and you've been watching the show from down there? Yes, I have, and uh, I'm enjoying the show. Was, I apologize. I was supposed to be here once before and couldn't make it, and I looked at the, the airlines to come down here, and the only one from Cape Coral to Providence was Virgin Airlines, and I said, <laughs> I'm not getting on a plane that doesn't go all the way. So I said... <laughs> Good bet. Oh. That's my mentor. <laughs> wow, look at that. One for one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here now. But I, uh, I want to say, I'm older. Uh, let's have a nice hand for Chops and, and, and Paul and all these guys here. They do a great job every week. I, I've been friends with Chops for a long time, Paul, and, and also Gary over here. And we have uh, also, we, uh, I want to say, uh, Hunter did a great job. And we have uh, Paul uh, uh, Hunter's dad over here. Yeah. And uh, he's the one of the guys and you who helped me get into radio. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Boy, you got a lot of people hate you. <laughs> 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 but I got to say, I admire Chops, though, because, you know, he loves the, the 49ers. Yeah. A and I became a fan of them a couple of weeks ago. I was, I, w I was doing, uh, I was, I was uh, vacuuming the house. The vacuum cleaner broke down, and I said, oh, gee, what am I going to do? And then it hit me. I said, I realized in the junk drawer, I had a 49 is <laughs> sticker in there. <laughs> so I took it out, and I peeled it off, and I slapped it on the, you know, on the vacuum cleaner. And you know what happened? You sucked it up? Uh, no, it didn't, it, it didn't work anymore, but the vacuum cleaner now sucks again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we're still we're still hanging in there with the Patriots. Yeah, we are. But but chops, I got good news for you. I'm going to make a prediction about the 49ers. Every away game they do this year, they're going to get at least one touchdown. It's going to be at the airport, but at least they're going to get one <laughs> touchdown. You know, uh, I know you're an entertainer, obviously. You can tell. you got a great stage presence, and you're a lot of fun. You play music. Stage you're a DJ. Presence. Stage presence. This is a stage presence? <laughs> it's like the reverse of the Michelin Man. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I talked to you when you first got here, and I, you almost sounded a little bit like Rodney Dangerfield, and you told me that you do an imitation of Rodney Dangerfield. 
Can we hear a little bit of that? Who the hell were you talking to? <laughs> I'll tell you, and I'll get no respect, none at all, you know? <laughs> the other day, my wife, she hit a tree. She said, it wasn't her fault. She blew a horn and didn't move, you know? <laughs> Yeah, she put a mirror over the bed. I says, why there's a mirror over the bed? She says, well, during sex, I want to see myself laugh. <laughs> wow, you sound just like him. That's a great imitation. Yeah, I know. Huh? At least I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about your business. You're still traveling around. You're still DJing as a profession, right? Well, I don't know about a profession, but uh, in three weeks, it'll be my 48th anniversary doing this. Yeah! Wow. Hope nobody finds out I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'll be in big trouble. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go back being a speed bump at Walmart. <laughs> so you, you play music, people dance, you host parties and all that? Yeah, I've, uh, I've been very lucky. I've been doing, done over 10,000 shows over the years. Yeah. Uh, I was able to uh, do uh, Mohican Sun for 18 years. I was your official DJ. Yeah. So that was fun. I was the first person to play in the 10,000-seat arena. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. And I, have, and I have the indoor attendance record. I played there New Year's Eve 2007 for 32,000 people. Oh, wow. That's unbelievable. Wow. Thank God the bus broke down. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. We're glad to see it. I, I imagine that when you're doing your show, not only playing the music, but you let your personality come out, right? Well, I, you know, it, anybody can play music. It's what you add in between the songs. And I've been lucky. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know this, but Tony, uh, you remember Tony Orlando? Yeah. Well, he and I became good friends. He was the best man when, when my wife and I, we got married. Matter of fact, we're just celebrating our 16th wedding anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's fantastic. Mrs. Balea? And after 16 years, she's happy, and I'm still married. <laughs> hey, you drove up from Florida with her in the car, right? Uh, well, I tried to get her on top, but she wouldn't let me do it. So, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, it was. And you also brought, what, your dog with you, too? Yeah, hey, shh, don't talk about my girlfriend that way. <laughs> Not in front of the wife, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, we have a girl, a do a Dixie is her name. She's a, it's a rescue dog, so... Uh, love her a lot. We lost one, but we still have one. Yeah, so. No, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. So, they're, uh, so I'm glad you're looking in on the show in, uh, in uh, you know, Florida. In fact, we see the messages. We type messages. Hey, look, Mike Balea, Mike Balea. And they were like, we got to get him on the show when you come for a visit. So I'm glad you were able to stop by. No, I appreciate it. And I enjoy it. You know, I, and, and I also was a comedian for a short while and a hypnotist. Oh, okay. you know, but you and I have a lot in common. You know, we both worked in radio together. <laughs> we've both done TV together. I was I was a hypnotist. I put people to sleep. I watch your jokes. You put people to sleep. So. <laughs> oh, you're killing me over here. Matter of fact, they heard Rubbermaid wants to be a sponsor of the show with your basket. They is the most use they ever get. <laughs> Hey, this is great. I really appreciate you stopping by. You got a great sense of humor. This is exactly what we're looking for on the show. The joking around, the fun, the laughs, the music, the whole thing. So you definitely get it. I'm you know, getting a stiff neck over here. But seriously, though, folks, uh, <laughs> go sit down, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis has left the building. <laughs> Tell us about Elvis in the last couple of years, uh, the, the outfits, uh, never mind. So anyhow, but I want to thank Paul for, for having me. I appreciate it. Real quickly, uh, I, I've been a DJ for 48 years. If you want to check out my radio shows, uh, I'm sure you remember JB105 way back in the day. I used to listen to it. Now I'm on it. They're back on the air. Yeah. What happened to Light 105? Somebody pulled the plug. <laughs> So anyhow, on Tuesday nights, I'm on uh, JB105. Check it out. And also, if you like oldies, that's what I specialize in. I'm on, uh, I'm on over 50 stations around the world, but the other station you catch me on is, uh, uh, yeah, it's a good station. You should listen to it more often. <laughs> it's called Allen's Golden Oldies, Monday through Friday, 6.30. I do oldies. I do, uh, I don't know if anybody out here remembers Alan Freed, the oh, DJ yeah. who co uh, coined rock and roll. But I do an Alan Freed tribute, and I do a couple of other shows. So... Uh, this is what I've been doing, but I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, 
and, and, and I hope to come back again. I hope you've been. Uh, okay. Okay. Welcome. But seriously, Paul, if I can for a moment here, today is a very special day. It's 9-11. Yeah, a lot of people lost their life today. And um, we're thinking about them. I think we should have a, a moment of silence for them, for the, uh, for the first responders, and for the people who serve this country, and uh, the firemen, policemen. So if we can all bow our head and, and remember all these people, we're here laughing, having a good time, but let's remember what today's also about. Thank you, folks. Let's give them all a nice hand out here. We appreciate them all. Thank you, Paul. God bless. Mike Palaya, ladies and gentlemen, super talented. You know, here's the thing, right? I just wanted to mention this, right? Everybody remembers where they were when they got the news about 9-11. I was listening to Pete Braley on the radio. I told Pete this story before. I was driving to Boston for a doctor's appointment, and I had the radio on, and Pete gave the news about the first plane. And we were thinking, what's this all about? And then Pete said, oh, my God, it's going to it's gotta be a terrorist attack. A second plane just hit. So I, I remember where I, I was, too, and it's kind of ironic that Pete's here tonight. But everybody kind of remembers where they were. And, again, I echo the words of Mike Balea. We have another special tribute coming up in just a moment. Stand by. Once again, uh, Gary and Artie. We'll be back in just about two seconds. Gary Artie and the PSL band, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We're actually going a couple of minutes over. You know, uh, we're up here joking around and yucking it up like we've been doing for quite a while. And we're trying to bring happiness and put the spotlight on local talent. That's why we always say we highlight the talented, interesting, and entertaining. But we had a really uh, deep loss uh, this past week. About a week ago, our comedy director, Allison Zdian's mom, passed away suddenly. And uh, I just wanted to say publicly at this time, and I speak on behalf of all of us here at the Paul Santos Live Show, Chops Turner, Artie, Gary, uh, Crazy Casey, you know, uh, everybody that's here tonight, uh, Roger, my wife, everybody that's here tonight, I don't want to leave anybody out. We offer the deepest condolences to the Diane family. We only knew her a couple of months, and she was so helpful to us. She loved what we were trying to do. She supported Allison's comedy career. She loved the fact that we're joking around all the time and trying to bring happiness and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, when I said to Allison, I said, hey, we want to kind of dial it back tonight. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because Allison would want us to continue with this show. So that's why we're still yucking it up and having a few laughs tonight. In honor of her. In honor of her. So... We, we want to absolutely dedicate this show to Nadine. Uh, Nadine dying, right? I swear to God, we, we get off the air usually at 8. We clean up. We got to put everything back. She would say, hey, can I carry this box? Can I carry that wire? And then she would sit with us till 10 o'clock at night shooting the breeze about what was good about the show, what we can do to make it better because we're always trying to make it better every week. How can we make it better? How can we make it more comical? How can we make it more entertaining? And she would sit here until 10 o'clock at night with just myself, Chops, a couple of people, Allison, and we just talk. She loved the show. She said Monday was her favorite night of the week. So it's just such a heartfelt feeling that we have with the loss of uh, Nadine dying. So at this time, with such talent that we have here, Chops Turner over here, we have, of course, Artie DeMello over here, Gary Langevin over here. We would like to finish our show tonight with this tribute. Again, uh, this show is dedicated to our very good friend, and we love you, and condolences and sympathies to the Dian family. This is for Nadine Dian. Thank you. All right, let's turn it over to my good friend, world-class vocalist and entertainer, Chops Turner. His favorite artist was Nat King Cole. Unforgettable. That's what you are. Unforgettable, though near or far, like a song of love that clings to me. How the thought of her does things to me never before. Has someone? Been more. 
unforgettable, unforgettable in every way. In every way. And forevermore. And forevermore. That's how you'll stay. That's how you'll stay. That's why, darling, it's incredible that someone like her, she's so unforgettable. She thinks that I am and you unforgettable too. Give it up for Artie, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so um, as we said, would have wanted us to continue on with the show, laugh, joke around, uh, do the beginning and so forth, and uh, that's what we decided to do in her honor. Um, what a terrific lady, huh? She would just hang around with amazing. us. I mean, absolutely amazing. And, and that is the, from the, the deepest depths of my heart and my soul. I've never met a woman that has affected me in such a way so quickly. And um, it's 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 a loss, and but it's a gain in my life. How precious life really is. And that's that's just the way it is. I mean, Al Allison is, Allison and her mom have brought su have brought such an amazing, yes, right, Chomps? Yes, an amazing yes. magic and, and, and um, switch to this project that we've got going on. That we couldn't go anywhere else without the memory of of Nadine for sure. And with Allison, you're not going anywhere, girl. Oh, you know absolutely that? Not, absolutely not. But you know, the funny thing is, she would come in here, and at first she would say, can I carry that box? I go, no, I got it. Can I carry that? Why? No, I got it. But I could tell she really <laughs> wanted to do it. Then we, then we learned at her service that she had obsessive compulsive behavior, so she needed everything clean. She really, she really wanted to clean this stuff up, and she was absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, so she helped us. And then Chops, I mentioned before, before we wrap it up, uh, yes. we would sit until 10 o'clock at night talking about the show, and she took yes. a real interest in you, and she would talk to you. She was talking about life issues and everything else. We, the stuff that you guys talked about was unbelievable. She was an incredible person. I'm going to definitely mi miss her. Allison said she, before she passed, uh, she thought of me with these, you know, she brought these for me, these yeah. mints. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, for the mints. You know? And uh, this will be, this will commemorate her in my life for a lifetime. Because she was definitely an um, impeccable person, unbelievable person, and always helpful, man, especially to this show here. And Allison is a definitely a, a keeper. <laughs> She's a keeper. Give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable, unbelievable. First, uh, my so uh, first thing is uh, my mom's favorite singer was Nat King Cole, and she would have loved that. That was beautiful, 
And uh, my mom was a compulsive neat freak. And I would make fun of her all the time. And I would say, Ma, no one's coming over. You don't need to vacuum every day. And she would say, I have friends that come over and people notice. <laughs> well, the day she passed away, um, I was left uh, waiting for the funeral home. And there was a police officer and a detective with me. And the police officer is just looking around the house. And he just goes, this house is immaculate. Amen, baby. And I just knew my mom was smiling, and she was smiling tonight, and she was smiling when she was just watching that. So thank you. Again, our condolences to the Diane family, uh, Allison, and the rest, and Randy, who's here tonight, her husband. Uh, our condolences to you and the entire family. All right, well, um, we'll be back here next week. We're here pretty much every Monday night at Mikey B's. And we will be back next Monday, so if you're around and you'd like to stop by, we'd really appreciate your support. Tim McKenna is going to be one of our guests. We also have the music of Morgan Peterson. Sinatra tribute singer Joey Charenzo will be here. And a comic that Allison Dyer hooked us up with, a funny, funny guy by the name of Dennis Mall. Again, this show is dedicated to you, Nadine Dyer. I'm Paul Santos. Don't forget to laugh for the Paul Santos Live Show. Have a great night, and thanks for coming out. Good night. Oh, fly me to the moon And let me play among the stars You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words, please be true In other words, I said we love you Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars In other words, hold Artie's hand Yeah! In other words, I said, Artie, come on and kiss me, man! Everyone have a wonderful evening and have a wonderful week. Have a great night. Thank you.